Well, here we are. We've got some royalty coming up in a moment, but a couple of other sporting stories. The Brisbane Broncos saga will officially end tomorrow morning. Anthony Seabold will be paid out. He's coached his last Broncos side. Look, I'm sure he's done his best, but many people who've given their best come up short. But the comment by this fellow Murphy, who was the second largest shareholder, that Anthony Seabold was a cancer that needed to be cut out of the club is at best unworthy. Can I explain to you, Mr Murphy, that this is just a game. Cancer is anything but a game. To another code, the AFL, the bidding is on to secure the AFL grand final. It looks as though the People's Republic of Victoria won't be able to stage the final, not because of coronavirus, but because of the response to it by the dictatorial Andrews. There is no epidemiological justification for not having crowds at sport, but everyone is on the alarmist bandwagon. The Queensland Premier seems to have offered the AFL up to $10 million cash. Funny that, don't you think? The state's in massive debt, but it can come up with $10 million. And no one's allowed to enter the joint, but they're bidding for an AFL grand final. Sadly, we're all victims of massive coronavirus contradictions. But on this AFL grand final venue, don't rule out Perth or Sydney. Queensland have an advantage because the bulk of the AFL teams are already housed there. Now, the big fight tomorrow night... Zoo versus Horn. This will be something in Townsville. Rightly described as a blockbuster, young Tim Zoo, with phenomenal boxing DNA and the absolute gentleman of boxing, Jeff Horn, who recorded that extraordinary victor, victory over one of the all-time greats, Manny Pacquiao, before 50,000 fans. I was there at Suncorp Stadium three years ago. I wish them both well, but I have a feeling the experience of Jeff Horn might prevail. And good luck to the former cricket Australia boss, James Sutherland who's been named Chief, Ex Chief Executive of Golf Australia. His immediate challenge will be to see whether the Australian Open will take place, scheduled for Melbourne in December. Well, now, sporting royalty, track and field. I can remember as if it was this morning when Jana Pittman, in 2003, at 21 years of age, was a phenomenal winner in Paris of the world, 400 metres hurdles final, 53.22, a time that most women can't run today for 400 metres on the flat. All the talk was of the Russian girl, Pechonkina, the world record holder. Jana had her covered every inch of the way. It was early morning Australian time. I remember the nation went nuts. Then she repeated the dose in Osaka, Japan, four years later in 2007. It was the biggest world championship ever, and Jana beat the Russian again. Have a look at the last stages of this. This is really tight. And the great Jana Pittman hangs on. They're going down the back straight there, as you can see, coming into the corner with about 200 to go. This is the toughest event in women's track and field. And here they are. Here we are coming into the top of the straight with 100 to go. It's extraordinary. You can't see too much there, but they'll come into the frame here now. And Jana is in front. That's Jana Pittman. She's in front. The girl on the right is Jana. She clears that easily. And then the Russian comes at her. Look at this. This is guts. This is guts. Isn't that astonishing? I don't think Australians appreciate how great this young woman was. She also won gold in the 2002 and 2006 Commonwealth Games in the same event. But Olympic glory was elusive. There always seemed to be an injury of some kind. And along with, along with it, a lot of tears. But listen to this. She's one of only nine athletes, now the greatest ever, people like New Zealand shot putter Valerie Adams, the freak Usain Bolt, the magnificent Jamaican sprinter Veronica Campbell-Brown, the pole vaulter Issen Baeva, and our own remarkable distance thrower Danny Samuels, who won world championships at youth, junior and senior events. But Jana also competed in the two-woman bobsleigh at the 2014 Winter Olympics, the first Australian female athlete to compete at Summer and Winter Games. But while that was happening, she decided in 2013 she'd study medicine at Western Sydney University. Can you believe this? In 2017, she completed a Bachelor of Medical Research. And the last I heard of Jana, she was planning on being an obstetrician and gyne gynaecologist. Yes, she did marry her English coach, himself a fine athlete, Chris Rawlinson. They had a child, Cornelius. And I remember Jana saying she went for a hard 20-minute run on the morning of the birth Jana and her husband separated in 2009. They renewed their vows in 2010, but they were divorced in 2011. She had a cervical cancer scare in 2015. 
She's now the mother of a son and two daughters. It is a phenomenal story. And she joins us via Skype. Yana. Good. Oh, sorry, Dr. Pittman. <laughs> Dr. Pittman. <laughs> what, Hi, do, Alan. <laughs> what, what do you think when you hear all that? Oh, it brings a few tears to my eyes, to be honest, because you, you don't, I think, stop and reflect on some of the amazing opportunities you've had in your life and your career. I will say medicine probably tops it all for me. Uh, standing on that day and being and being called doctor for the first time was was pretty special. But yeah, I feel very, very grateful to have had such a, an amazing athletics career and, and been you know, so heavily involved in track and field and bobsled uh, running for Australia. And when you walk down the corridors at the hospital and go into a ward, which you are doing, do they know that you yes. were one of the greatest, greatest female <laughs> athletes ever? Do they know that? Sometimes. So sometimes you get the patient going, oh, where do I know you from? Um, and I think sometimes it gives the patient confidence because they think they know your background and they feel like they have a bit of, you know, a personal relationship with you already. And other times I get, did you really go to medical school? Are you sure you've graduated? <laughs> so I think it's, it gets a bit of both. I remember that morning. I remember that morning so well for the first world title. The nation went nuts. It was tough. My oh, God, you, you just hung on, didn't you? Well, that was a really unexpected world champs, actually, because I was quite young, as as you highlighted. Yeah. And yeah, and I think Phil and I were just hoping for a medal, any colour, to be honest. So I, I remember coming off the last hurdle and thinking, oh my goodness, this is real. Like Am I really, really going to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and then, then you, you won. And, and, and then you yeah. won two of them. Now, listen, I just wanted you on so that we could tell your story to the rest of Australia. And I can tell you, you and I have had lots of yarns. Some of them been happy, some of, some of them unhappy. But I want to say to you this we'll never forget you. And we'll never forget what you've done and what you've achieved. And we'll keep in touch on this new journey. Thank you, Alan. It's a real pleasure to be here with you and tonight. You're a wonderful, wonderful star. Dr. Yana P And the three kids, <laughs> how old are they? Quickly, before we go. Uh, three, five and 13. And would you believe there's a number four on the way? Oh, so. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> you, never, you never did anything at half measures, Yana. All right. No, clearly. All the best. Lovely to talk See, to you. We love you. Lovely talking All to you the too. best. Thank there you. There she is. Isn't that a story? Dr. Yana Pittman back with my final comment.